welcome. This is frame by frame. We're in a car. Yes, we're en route to um, a cinema at the Trafford Centre in Manchester. What are we going right. to watch, Stephen? We're going to go watch The Muppets. No, 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 no. Um, we're going to go watch <laughs> Avengers Age of Ultron. You talking to me? Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? Well, who the hell are you talking to? Talking to me? I'm no, funny how. I mean, funny. I'm funny. Like, I'm Peter Vink. We all go a little mad sometimes. Man who doesn't spend time in this family can never be mad. Yeah. I'm kind of a big deal. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! I'm gonna show you something beautiful. Everyone screaming for mercy. You want to protect the world, but you don't want it to change. You're all puppets. Tangled in strings. Strings. It's the end. The end of the path I started us on. Nothing lasts forever. There are no strings on me. Yes, we are. I watched it last night, and I'm going to watch it again this morning. <laughs> yeah, literally, he went out last night at 8 o'clock. Was it 8 o'clock? Half 8. Half 8 to watch it uh, in 3D uh, at an IMAX, IMAX screen. Maybe, yeah. IMAX, And uh, he, he watched it. He, he went to, uh, got home at 12. He sent me a, a, a vile... Uh, voicemail message. So you were pretty excited. Yep. Really and uh, so he came home, went to bed, got up this morning, hugged his wife and kid, came back out to watch it again. Yeah, well, I thought it was important that Stephen watch it and we discuss the film. Exactly. I mean, I, I could have just blagged it and pretended that I'd seen it, but, uh, you know, what was the fun in that? Exactly. You don't want to do that again, do you? <laughs> <laughs> what did I do that before? I'm not at liberty to say. Oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So well. all, all those Indiana Jones films, I was a little bit too young to yeah. go and watch those, I'm yeah, afraid. Seven. Yeah. You knew nothing about Seven. That was all I, thing. Seven? That's crazy. I was actually, I actually saw that in, um, in, in the most run-down cinema in Boston. It got knocked down, the, uh, I think, the following year. as a vile cinema. Really horrible. That's twice you used the word vile. Vile? I love the word vile today. It's good. The, the road is quite uh, busy at the moment. We're, we're heading towards the Trafford Centre, so it's bound to bound to look a little bit uh, dicey at times. Yeah, and we've got this 50 mile an hour limit all around the M60 while they do nothing to the motorway at all. It's quite frustrating. It's the same all around the world, I think. You always get motorways and roadworks, but there's never anybody there working, ever. Let's get to the point now. I can't find my way to the bathroom unless there's a row of traffic cones leading me there. That's quite a helpful beacon when it's when it's middle of the night. Yeah. So anyway, Age of Ultron. Um, yes. It's about um, Tony Stark tries to come up with like a peacekeeping program. So the Avengers don't really need to avenge anymore because there'll be these robots that will instantly, any threat towards the human race will be distinguished, sorry, extinguished straight away. So okay. and so they can be taken out of it and perhaps actually have lives. Um, this, this this AI, which is called Ultra, um, Tony tries to create. Um, it sort of becomes self-aware and realizes that the only threat to this planet is humanity. So he must destroy all of humanity. Right. So it's a little bit bigger scale than the last movie. Yeah. It starts off full on James Bond. It's got like a Bond opening to it. It's all like... Action. Really? Yeah, it's great. Just full on action. And then um, 
it's a lot darker than um, we used to the Avengers films being and uh, it, it's quite good because Ultron who's voiced by uh, is it James Spader oh I hope so yeah, yeah him. <laughs> he's got real daddy issues with Tony Stark and there's this uh, it's, yeah it's really good but he's like you notice this this artificial intelligent robot it's like really witty and intelligent and um Oh, well, that's James Spader. I mean, he's well. It's just reading scripts. Yeah, it's his script, but J- James Spader has a delivery that's probably well, quite yeah, it's r- dry brilliant. and uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, mean, I loved him in Boston Legal. Incredible. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll have your thoughts after we've seen the film, obviously. But um, this film would not have worked if it wasn't for Joss Whedon's script. It, it, it's just it's subversive, like the original Avengers Assemble was, but it's just. It, it, when it cut just a comedy in its script it's not like on your face comedy just witty one liners and so it's just brilliant it's really really funny really good yeah I kind of loved it can't wait to see it it's again. great I mean, I mean you'll be able to watch it with a little bit more of an analytical view on the second time yeah I'm going to be sitting there going <laughs> well, exactly. and you'll be you'll be like going okay so that scene connects with that and yeah. uh, you'll be making putting all the pieces together while I just and what because last night was 3D IMAX it was an incredibly immersive experience probably the best IMAX experience I've had yeah. that's good so we're watching it in 2D now um, I'll be able to just watch it as a film as opposed to being inside the actual film so you, you saw um uh was, how many times did you see Godzilla? Once. <laughs> that was enough, right? Yeah, I don't need to see it anymore. I was, no, I watched it again, but like at home. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, to try and think, oh, it can't be that bad. It can't be that bad. It's like, really yeah. That great. And Lucy, did, did you watch that how many times? Once. That was once as well. Yeah. Um, do you think you're going to break the record with uh, Avengers? I mean, what, what film have you actually been to that you've actually been constantly over and over again? Was there a film that you've been to the cinema more than three times, four times? Independence Day. Indep- Independence Day? Yeah, when that was released, I um, we've talked about this because I was sort of, I was zapped in by the whole marketing campaign for yeah, it. Yeah. So when it actually released, even if the film was awful, I think I was already decided that the film was going to be the best thing I'd ever seen anyway. But yeah, I think I must have watched that about five six times at the cinema I watched Guardians of the Galaxy four times that was that was the one that was what I was thinking of I was thinking you yeah you've definitely seen that four times yeah I went yeah. four times ooh traffic's looking a little bit hazy got motorcycles on the outside lane got uh trying to get into this lane now ooh he's just concentrating at the moment so I'm just taking hold of the uh of the uh, the audio recorder this is kind of this is a very different podcast <laughs> it's kind of like Challenge Annika, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. So, uh, yeah, so Guardians of the Galaxy you saw four times. I have only been to the cinema to see an, uh, a film more than once, only once. I've only seen one film twice in the cinema. What was that? As Good As It Gets, Jack Nicholson. Oh, right. Okay, it's a good film. And both were two different girls. Oh, double dating. It was one of those joyous, joyous times of my life where, yeah. What if this is as good as it gets? Yeah. That was one heck of a year for film. It was. That was Jerry Maguire, wasn't it? And American Beauty, wasn't it? Jerry Maguire. Um, American Beauty was the year after. Year after. It was Good Will Hunting, oh, As Good As It Gets, uh, Titanic. <laughs> Titanic. <laughs> oh! Okay. So the Trafford Centre sign is just coming up, so we'll be uh, we'll be signing off soon. Yep. Yeah, I'll have to focus on driving now, guys. So uh, yeah, catch you. We'll, we'll catch you in the bit. car park. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you in the car park. <laughs> we are heading into the Trafford Centre. Yes, we are. Consumer capital of Manchester. Yes. Oh, can you smell that money? <laughs> just, just spilling away. <laughs> Look, there's a bin full of money. <laughs> I put, I've just got, I put five pound in the bin. <laughs> just yeah, we just dropped it in because that's what that's what they need us to do. Now, it's, it's just forget about buying stuff. Yeah, it's quite quiet at the moment. Look at these people. What, what right 
what right-minded person would come to the traffic centre at this time in the morning to watch a film <laughs> and shop? Ridiculous people. Odeon Cinema. We're, we're just passing the um, the quartet band. We're heading down to New Orleans. Yeah. Which really is authentic, isn't it? Yeah. It's got a weather spoons and everything, just like just like New Orleans. <laughs> Last time we were here, we were uh, getting uh, video footage for something, weren't we? Yeah, we were going to do a trailer, weren't we, for um, Cinedyne? Yeah, that's right. And that's we right. had um, a shot. So if you've never been to the Trapper Centre, it's like a bit in the middle, it's like a boat, and they had like this big screen up. And we had every, we had a shot of everyone eating, and I put like the trailer of Evil Dead on it, didn't I? Got all that blood. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, we're kind of trying to subvert the idea that people will just. What have anything on the background whilst they're eating you know, because it, it's more about the food than the actual film or the cinema yeah the experience of it is all about food which we're not going to do as well we, we, we're in here at the Odeon but we're not going to buy any food no matter how much they try right we're not in a club no we're actually in a cinema it sounds like a club but it really isn't so we were going to go for the 10 o'clock 3D showing, but it's IMAX and 16 frigging quid. 16 bucks for an IMAX. I went watching, this is this is 10 o'clock on a Friday morning. I mean, they should do some sort of concession for that time in the morning. Yeah, exactly. But they obviously have people paying because it's... But for a standard yeah. 2D showing, it was £11. £11 people. I'm shocked. It's amazing. I mean, I remember going to the cinema, it used to be five bucks. Uh, I know I was a student, but... Uh, so let's have a look at the layout here. We're, we're sitting pretty much in the middle. Yeah. Um, middle, middle, south, middle. Yeah, literally smack back in the middle. Always um, the best place to go, I find. Yeah, because we've got, we got a, like a balcony in front of us. Well, like a rest. We've got plenty of leg room. Nobody in front of us sitting back in their seats and uh, irritating us. Um, the only people who can do that would be wheelchair access. If, if someone in a wheelchair sits in front of me, I'm just going to wheel my way. Uh, we've got two, three, away. four safety exits. Four safety exits? Yeah. So okay, that's if, good. if a fire breaks out... We're not as screwed as we could be. Yeah, we're, we're, we're safe. Um, there's big... We'll, Litting up words on the side of the wall saying Odeon so we don't forget where we've just spent our money. <laughs> just remember where you are. Yeah. I just I just commented just as I sat down that the, the seats kind of are slightly pivoted at an angle. And it makes me think that if you've got loose change in your pocket, it's just going to roll out within a, spe within a time of two hours. Yeah, and it'll be like a... Collector's part at the bottom of each chair. Yep, yeah, maybe if we if we looked from higher up, we'll see that the the ground all sort of goes to the centre. There's like a little hill that goes into the centre, and all our change falls in down there. <laughs> yeah, and it, 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 it just goes down for us to a sorting room, and that angry guy who served you water <laughs> is sitting in the, sitting down there trying to trying to count all his stacks of money. He, um, I just said, Can I have a bottle of water, please. Said, yeah, which was one pound eighty five. One pound eighty-five. And then he couldn't get his till to work, and he really lost it, didn't he? <laughs> he was losing his shit over oh, a till. It won't work. It won't work. And he starts beating the side of his. Um, he starts beating the side of the till because clearly that would make it work. Hilarious. Yeah, because that helps, you know. But but then he finished doing that job, and he walked around the counter, and then he came and punched our tickets, and well, I say punched our tickets, tore it, and then said, "Screen seven. <laughs> We're clearly together. He took Stephen's ticket, ripped it, said, "Screen seven. He took my ticket, ripped it, and said, screen seven. And then for me, because obviously I don't look as well adjusted as Stephen does, he pointed to where screen seven was. <laughs> Did he? Yeah. And oh, it was easy to see where screen seven was, because there's a doorway with a huge fucking seven on top of it. Kind of helpful. Yeah. <laughs> he's, trying, he's trying his best to be less aggressive, I guess. <laughs> Ten o'clock on a Friday morning, who wants to be working then? Do you think he was angry because he hasn't upsold from a medium to a large popcorn today so far? That's probably what it is. And maybe he spilt the cheese. Maybe he oh. spilt the liquid cheese. The watered down liquid cheese. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's freaking think? awesome. That's, um, th there's so much to talk about now. I mean, I... I <laughs> really? Wow. Okay. Let me just say, it is the absolute perfect comic book movie. Yeah. 
Um, it's made for a comic book. It looks like a comic book. Every single action sequence made sense. You knew where everything was. It, you know, that that's how. You know, and so I, 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 I'm on the surface now, but I'm actually looking at looking at it from a different angle here. I'm looking at it because it is a comic book movie and it's yeah. really well made, really well done. Dazzling spectacle. That's yeah. how. That's a that's a pure blockbuster film. Yeah, that's exactly what we've been missing for this last decade. You know. I didn't mind the corniness of the lines. No, because again, it's a comic book. It's a comic book film. And it wasn't trying to be anything else other than a comic, comic book, book film. film. How would you like the 2D version? I actually preferred it. Yeah? Yeah, I'm glad I watched it in IMAX because it was so immersive. Yeah. But, like, at certain points, I was getting, like, vertigo. You know, like, when... All that... When, like, the car goes off the bridge. Yeah, and yeah. And he grabs the bumper and then all of a sudden the bumper rips off and he just goes down. You sort of feel it. Yeah. So when you can just watch it on 2D... It's like, all right, yeah. Your brain can do, do, do yeah. the rest of it, yeah, yeah. That's like that's kind of what I th- think 3D would would be like. That's why I, I don't want to try it because I know it's going to be too much of a sensory overload. Yeah, well, I think 3D is just it, you have problems with um, the size of things. Everything just looks like toys. Yeah. But with IMAX, you're sort of in it. Yeah, I you guess know so. What I mean? yeah, yeah. So it's a little bit different. So I prefer to watch it 2D. I'm glad I saw it in IMAX, though. So. Yeah, it gives you. A, a full experience of the film. And I also preferred it the second time, the film. Yeah? Yeah, Yeah. because there's, there's so much. There is so, so much, So you can take it, yeah. all, take it all in better the second time. Exactly, and I think, I think that's, you know, it's, this is the reason why movies are bought after you watch them, and you watch them again and again. This yeah. is why, because there's so much to take in. And it's not nuts and bolts and things just being flung together for no reason. Everything kind of made sense it was kind of like it was like CGI poetry it all rhymed that's you very I mean? good that's a very good way of putting it it, it was it's probably the first time where actually I didn't actually go I don't know what the hell's going on yeah because it, it kind of made yeah it was fluid but there was some corny dialogue in there too <laughs> there was but mostly off Captain America and that's kind of his thing that is yeah he's yeah. patriotic and yeah that's, that, that's it yeah I think so because you know, a lot of the other, none of the others really spoke like that. No, and I think they were, and it was it was actually still nice for them to still get aggravated with each other and fling yeah. each other around a bit. Well, the next film that's going to be coming out, sort of. Well, you've got more Marvel, but you got Push. Um, Civil War, which is going to be um, Iron Man against Captain America. Yes, because you mentioned yeah. I yeah, remember you so saying what's that happening is. Um, because everything's happened, Tony Stark thinks that anyone with superpowers should be registered. But Captain America is dead against that. Okay. And then it's uh, that's a rip. So it's kind of like, the, yeah, yeah, getting ID'd and, and the freedom and uh, freedom and uh, patriotism. And, yeah. yeah. Okay. Civil War. It's one of those strange entities where you you, you can't really predict how it's going to end. Okay, I just wanted to get to get a, a, a few a few of the people. Um, were Speedy Gonzalez and uh, and Carrie <laughs> were were they X Men mutants? Ah, right. I because that. I thought they were mutants. No, they've been. There's no connection. They can't. Yeah, the X Men have the mutants. Um. The Avengers can't have mutants. It's some sort of law, some sort of legal thing. Oh, so man. they've been experimented on. But Quicksilver, the fast guy, he was in Days of Future Past. Uh huh. The same character, but obviously different. Um, he was arguably better in Days of Future Past because he has this like amazing scene in it. But the Avengers, it's more like his actual comic book character. You know, they've got the Russian accents and stuff. Yeah. I okay. thought she was amazing. Uh, the, Olsen. Sc- yeah, Scarlet Witch. So she, what, she makes them the most powerful of them all, them, really. When well, she harnesses the power. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. More devastating. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. So you like.
right to. I, I did, yeah, yeah. I was. Uh, I, I I kind of felt like I was going into the film expecting that anyway. I expected um, I expected the spectacle. Now we're recording. So Elizabeth Olsen was pretty special. She was. I thought she was really good. I think she's turned out to be a really good actress. But her character, I think, yeah. is going to turn out to be so powerful. Yeah, that they'll evolve her. Because yeah. now they've got the it's almost like the next generation of uh, Avengers, well, Avengers for the trainers. And, yeah, the second wave of Avengers team. Yeah, and um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. The the depth for these uh, yeah. these these characters is, is is more than I've ever seen in any superhero film, and I think this is probably what you were trying to tell me twenty five episodes ago <laughs> yeah. when we when we did the Babadook, or did the Babadook do us? I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> think about that. <laughs> um, yeah, when I was kind of reluctant to touch any of these uh, superhero films, well, who was he driving? Like, is he in Ukraine? That's a bit of a rush. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, it, it had a lot more depth, and yeah, I was I was pleasantly surprised. Okay, so you should have seen that coming. Yeah, I can't do a Russian accent. But I like the, the repetition. At the very beginning, um, Captain America has that thing about swearing. Yeah. And it just keeps coming up all the way through. It's it's operatic theme. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's repetition, it's rhyming. Like I say, it, there's, there's like a certain the poetry. Up, yeah, like the picking up of Thor's hammer. Yeah. There's a party all trying to do it, and then Vision picks it up, and everyone does that, that take one shot, like, what the What do you hell? call it? Vision? Vision, yeah. That's his name. All right. I thought it was uh, and then Jasper. The, and then obviously at the very end, they're still talking about it. Yeah, it was great. What was it? Jasper, Jacob, uh, the, the name of the computer? Jarvis. Jarvis, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see I'm totally into this. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea who anybody is. In this yeah, movie. Uh, yeah, about halfway through, you know, Stephen leans to me and goes, is that Paul Bettany? <laughs> I was just catching up. Paul Bettany well yeah like I said Paul Bettany voiced Jarvis although it's since the very first Iron Man film right ah. so it was only logical I suppose for um, the actual actor to take on Vision ok absences well, were you were you happy that Gwyneth Paltrow wasn't in this one yes very much so I was happy that Natalie Portman was in it I was surprised she wasn't in his Vision but, well, I thought well, she, uh, well, she she meant a lot to him right she does but when Thor had his vision it was um, back in Asgard wasn't it I'll take your word on that yeah, one yeah it was in Asgard and obviously um, you saw the gems <laughs> and then he's catch up on all the films though. yeah I mean um, I can tell you what I've watched because I understand I understand that these um, the, these Marvel films are split up into groups phase one phase two there's yeah. the uh, Avengers Ensemble um, which is Iron Man Thor Captain America the Hulk movie with with Edward Norton. Yeah. That that one that everybody remembers. Jennifer Connelly was in that one as well. No, oh, Jennifer Connelly was in the one. The first one was it with Eric Banner. Really? Yeah, the one that Ang Lee directed. Eric Banner, of course. Yes, yes, yes. That was the one on the back of uh, Godzilla, the 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 bad 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 one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. gosh, uh, who was it in the um, Edward Norton version? Um, I can't remember. Skates oh, Liv Tyler. That was it. Yep, Liv Tyler. That was it. Just, just flew into my head. Um, wh where? Why didn't? Uh, why? Why was Mark Ruffalo? Uh, no one has really got Hulk right apart from him and Joss Whedon. I think Mark Ruffalo is an incredible um, version of, of the Hulk. I, I, I'm, I'm quite impressed by him. Yeah, he's almost scared of himself all the time. Yeah, I like that. I, I really saw that. And yeah, yeah, very. So I think um, it just didn't quite work with Ed Norton. And maybe Ed Norton didn't really. Doesn't seem the sort of role for him, does it? A superhero. Yeah, he's not really. Um, well, I don't really see Hulk as a superhero. I think he's a flawed. I, th I think he's uh, his superhero is his genius when he's not actually the Hulk. Well, that's the beauty of all of them. They're all flawed. Like, Tony yeah. Stark really is an arsehole. Yeah, yeah. Boy, he's... True. 
up a, he's this billionaire genius, you know, and he built a suit, and that's basically it. Just a man in a can, as you said in Iron Man 3. Now, now the, the first film I, I saw, the first film a, a couple of weeks ago, the first Avengers, Avengers yeah. the, the first Avengers film, and the one thing that took me uh, that down a notch, um, that kind of took me out of the movie a little bit, was the fact that I knew that they would all survive, uh, they weren't really in any danger, um, they were just going to bounce off the walls, and they weren't going to get hurt, there wasn't anything at, 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 at jeopardy for them, but that was different this time. Did yeah, you feel that about the first film? No, because the, when I watched the very first Avengers film, um, I didn't know who was going to see the end of it. You know but, what I mean? but, the, but they all did, anyway. Well, they all did, obviously. Yeah, yeah but um, I was totally wrapped up in that film. I thought it was amazing. And I thought they did such a good job of getting all the different characters together and, you know, having them all working together was... Fantastic. Oh, so, and working against each other as well, I guess. Yeah. Well, they have to argue and fall out before they come back together and realise that they're, you know, the greater than the sum of the parts. And, yeah, and they did the first show of Fallen Out in this one as well, didn't they? Which was, which was good. And not, you know, not too artificial. It's not just out there to say, you know... It was, it was perfectly placed because Stark was going out to, to, to do his own thing again and he's just not learning from his own, you know, mistakes. But again, though, they did it really well where he, he couldn't get it right, so they just left it. And then while in his absence, it became a word, didn't it? Ultron became a word. And it yeah, set itself that's it. Straight away. So even though he going against the team, well, not telling the team what he was doing, it was wrong. It's yeah. that kind of not his fault. Kind of, but it's like well, it uh, fault, it's kind of like the Ghostbusters playing with the ooze in Ghostbusters too. Okay. They, they should have known better not to put it in the toaster. But it danced. It <laughs> did. <like> <laughs> <in> toaster. <laughs> See, this sounds like our podcast now, where it we're talking about other things. Now yeah, we're just drifting. We've we've never actually done this in a car before. Um, the driving podcast. <laughs> so, the podcast. Oh, it, it's very strange, very artificial um, environment to, to work in. So you said that about the toaster. I'm thinking, do you, ever, do you remember the uh, toaster in Red Dwarf? Oh, yes. It's obsessed with making toast. And then <laughs> whatever you like? said, it came back to toast. I don't want no toast! So you're a Breville guy. <laughs> <laughs> I love that toaster. Oh, uh, Silicon Heaven? Yeah, Silicon Heaven. Silicon Heaven. Where all the microchips go with it. Well, where do all the, all the, uh, the calculators? It was the yeah, calculators. calculators. That's it. Yeah. Where do all the calculators go? Yeah. Um, so as the story played out, then do you think it was paced perfectly? Well, it, it was paced like um, like like somebody in a speeding lane. It was very very fast paced, but when it slowed down, it, it took moments and it really really stopped. Yeah, which is. What did you think about the backstory, especially with um, Scarlett Johansson? You know about the, you know. Yeah, the the, the she can't have the babies. Well, Quite yeah. Dark, man. <laughs> it it is pretty uh, pretty dark, and it's uh, it's not something you get in superhero movies. I mean, imagine them trying this 20 years ago. I think, do you know what's, what's been going on this last 20 years? Is is Joss Whedon has been watching this landscape of uh, superhero films. Um, it was possibly it was going down the toilet. It was awful. Um, the, the first, you know, going back into the early '90s, where they, they made the first Captain America with the big wings on the side of the head. They made. Um... Oh, here we go. Here's my amazing long list of, of failed. Um... Well, yeah. I mean, think about it. The, the bit, Batman got a little bit fluffy, camp. a bit camp, and a bit nipples on the suit nipples on suits and uh, I don't know the, the, they did a Famous Four was it a Famous Four film? Fantastic Four Fantastic Four film see they were terrible bombed. we saw the trailer for the new one for this didn't we yeah which looks marginally better but, but they're, 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 see. they're reaching towards the Joss Whedon way but still when you look back at, at all these weird things that came out in the early 90s well it starts with Iron Man the very first Iron Man where yeah. things started getting good that's did they have a the vision? Really, really great film, and I think yeah. see how well that did. Then we'll try something else, and then they'll do Captain America: 
the first Avenger, that did well, some of Iron Man 2, and then Thor, and they used directors you wouldn't think of. Yeah, I mean, Kenneth Branagh did uh, Kenneth Thor. Branagh did Thor. I mean, you wouldn't have thought that, but he made it really good, and especially when Thor comes to Earth, and he's this fish out of water, arrogant git, who's not worthy to pick up the hammer yet, until he finds himself. Gotcha. That's yeah. quite Shakespearean, isn't it? So it's very, yeah. Of, uh, yeah. Branagh to do that. Right, but I I I haven't seen four. No, you haven't. And I haven't seen four two. No, you haven't. Or four three. Oh yeah. Or four 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 four. <laughs> uh, did Kenneth Branagh do the second one? No, no. I why not? Why Why was Kenneth Branagh so? Uh, I don't think he was against it. I was was he just? I think he might be. He wanted the film to be out at a certain time. Because now we're in, that was phase one, then they're in phase two, so we're currently be in phase three now. True, true. You know, if he's not available, you know, he's just done Cinderella, hasn't he? So if he's not available to do the film, we'll move on to the next. Yeah, so. kind of, kind of. Branagh had a bit of a, a, a revamp on his career, really, with um, Thor, because he wasn't really doing much. No, and again, you know, he did Frankenstein, didn't he? Didn't, didn't do well at all it wasn't I think it's a really good film it was a great film the Robert De Niro 1993 yeah. or 92 doesn't matter so I suppose it goes back to Kevin Feige who's the mastermind behind all this Marvel Cinematic Universe he seems to know the people that are right to do things he knows the the process and going forward I'm really excited to see where it goes next you know we've got Ant-Man coming out soon which we're really looking forward to it's weird. I'm, I'm just getting used to all this uh, Ant-Man. Well, I've never heard of Ant-Man before. Right. Well, it looks like they take the mick out of it in the um, in the film. In the trailer, is like... Uh, just one more thing. You know, can we change the name? You know, so they're taking the mick out of it. Because, you know, Ant-Man, Batman, yeah, Fishman, Ant -Man, Fish -Man, yeah, yeah. Catman, do. It was just all very... Um, you know, Tongue-in-cheek. Tongue-in-cheek. Yeah. yeah, well, very comic book. It is, <laughs> but that, that, going back to this movie, um, I did notice a few scenes where all the Avengers. I think they did it in the first one as well, where they're all having a big fight scene, yeah. and they slow down, and, and then we have a good look at everybody. Okay. Yep. We're doing all right. Yeah, yeah, we're fine. We're just making a maneuver. Yeah, go. On. It's right. fine. They slowed it all down, and we had a look at everybody. And I, I suddenly got it. I figured it out. You know, when I said about this being a comic book movie, that was a full page splash. That was a full page splash of a comic book. Yeah. Where you see all the action happening at once with all the characters. Um, this this was panelled. This movie was panelled, and, and I bet the storyboards were glorious. I mean, I'm surprised they wouldn't sell the storyboards as a comic book. Um, no, no doubt it was probably all pre-visualization pre and yeah, 3D that, yeah. that, that no, no single artist other than Stan Lee would have actually touched the canvas but um, and wasn't he good in this? yeah he was great all pissed off Stan Lee was great and, but and, you know yeah. like logistically it's, it's quite an achievement on the directing level isn't it? because some of those takes were incredibly long now there may be cuts that we didn't see yeah, yeah. like the opening it's quite wild before you actually see a cut and they're all fighting and there's lots of CGI in there and it's logistically it's quite a, a marvel to, um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> to, yeah. but to watch and it's beautiful to watch the special effects these days are just incredible you can't tell what special effects and what's real anymore you mean the Hulk's not real? oh no the Hulk's real yeah, yeah. I've seen him I've seen him about yeah yeah yeah, yeah. he hangs around um, Middleton yeah. <laughs> Okay, so is that better? Yeah, that's good. That's good. Right, so we're back in frame by frame HQ. This is this is where all the magic usually happens. Indeed. Yeah, and um, wow. Yeah, we, I'm glad you liked it. I I really really enjoyed that. Yes, and I and I, yeah, I'm just glad that I actually caught up with, with a few of these movies because you know you, you've been telling me ever since the first episode yeah. to watch these films and and you know. I can see how people um, who maybe are into David Lynch films and you know that kind of thing will think, um, superheroes, it's a bit dumb. It's not though. It's and not, that, yeah. Yeah, and you're they've right. created this universe and a thread that's going through. They've terrified other studios because DC are now trying to do the same thing. Yeah. 
you yes. know, it, to try and compete with it. They're doing Batman versus Superman to try and compete with this. Marvel but that's not thing. that's not that's exactly what we don't want to see. I mean, as as people who have a chip on our shoulder about superhero films, mm. um, you know, we don't want to just see people just trying. We want to see people doing, and this yeah. is what what the, this is the difference because we we weren't a, until somebody actually tells us you know this is honestly going to be good. Trust me, this is better than whatever you've seen before. Whatever weirdness you've you've, you've that's, that's been going through the nineties, you know, just to, to ignore all of that. This is all past. They're actually doing something better this time. I'm just going to go for a little bit more output. That's it. But again, I think it always comes down to the person who's making the film and who's wrote the film, if they love the characters. Yeah, if you're going to know it. Yeah, and they, no matter what genre of film you're in, if you yeah. love the characters, that will come through. And you can tell that Joss Whedon loves the characters the same way as James Gunn loves the characters of Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, he loves them, he understands this universe, and look what you can do. They weren't. Too, he wasn't too keen on Alien Resurrection, though. No, but I think the studio messed with that a lot, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. And Jean Pierre Junet should not have directed it. No. And that's an example of a film that you know that had such a staple to it that was just completely thrown into this mm. quasi area. Well, and, again, and that's we, it. That's we were the... talking as we were driving back that directors being a strange choice. Yeah, that's I right. I mean, Joss Whedon was a strange choice to do the first Avengers film. Absolutely, and to write it. Well, probably not to write it because he's, he's writing credentials speak for themselves. But I think the only other f major film that he directed was Serenity. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then to give him this hundred million dollar, you know, investment it, it film, and then from the him to then turn it into the third biggest grossing movie of all time. I'm I'm hoping that Age of Ultron um, knocks any Transformers movie off its on, on its head. Um, so do I yeah definitely yeah, because I think Michael Bay needs to just stop you've got to watch that and think god I can't what have I been doing well there's there's such a big difference between these two movies I mean there's so much common sense and maturity in these in these Marvel creations mm. that are coming out now there's there's maturity and there's understanding about film That that's that's the fundamental thing it's, it's yeah. the, the story thread the storytelling um, the ability to to create the the right arcs when the storyline needs to to slow down it really slows down. It's not afraid to just suddenly stop that's and look out of a window. I mean, what was that about? I mean, that's incredible. That's an incredible brave thing to do. Not the, it's not brave to just blow things up all the time. Oh, when Vision just comes to the window yeah, and then just, just stirs at the just city, stops. and then they have that look, that fade where you just sit looking at him, so his own reflection. It's yeah. a beautiful moment. It is, and it's every, all of a sudden everybody just you're not uncomfortable. You don't. It just feels so natural. Mm. Um, any other, I mean, that would have never have played out in 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 any Michael Bay film that I can imagine. There's just everything just stopping, um, but let's let's let let's not talk about him because I think he's you know. He's, but um, th this it's a maturity about understanding what film is and what it can do. Yeah, and, and to just have that that witty banter. I can't get I can get past it with the first Avengers film because to me I thought it was a really funny film and not as dark as this. But to always have that Joss Whedon wit. Yes. Yeah, when Andy Circus when he's talking about what's he scared of, and he talks about that fish, the pilot fish. I feel he calls it something else, and it's really funny. The cuttlefish. Yeah, that's it. That's a really funny little. Just what he's scared of. Ah, oh, so documentary ones terrified me. I just thought it was really funny. It's great. It is great. Yeah, I mean that was Andy Circus. That was Andy Circus. Oh my god. <laughs> Because they got yeah. him on board because all the Hulk stuff was motion captured. Mark Ruffalo yeah. did all that. Yeah, yeah. And um, they had him on, as, I guess, as technical support to sort of help. And they, I think they wants to give him something. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he did. A, he did a really good job of that. Well, clearly, because you didn't know who Andy Serkis. Well, yeah, but it, it was actually a really good character. I mean, it wasn't just a throwaway character. He really kind of s stuck something in there. Yeah. that was that was you know. Memorable. It could have gone a little bit further with it, I guess, because you know when he obviously. Vacuum. Oh, oh yeah, we're definitely in the office. Yeah, oh, when Ultron essentially, ch when Ultron yeah. ch chops his arm off. Yes. And then you know knocks him down the stairs, and he's just like he's down there. He's like, right, shoot them, shoot who, shoot everyone, just shoot. And everyone, then you don't yeah. see him again. Yeah. But then that's it. you've got that much in. The, you don't need to see him again, I guess. But you've got that much going on within the film. 
but that you can't. You keep... don't need to, yeah. And I mean, otherwise the film would be three or four hours long. I mean, or or it would be two parts, like the Hobbit movies. Yeah. And the five armies uh, of which nobody can actually understand who who's who and who's fighting where. I mean, the, the the thing is, you can have five armies, you can have ten armies, you can have five transformers, you can have whatever. But mm. you've got you've still got to be able to identify all the pieces of your of your of your game. You've yeah. got to know where everything's going and where it's coming from, and and for them to execute that so well here, yeah, they let the small pieces drop off. They don't need to pick them up again. Absolutely, and you've set up the future universe you set it all up with future films that are coming out I, I I kind of wonder how far in advance they actually set all that up that, that we're aware of I mean, I'm guessing that, like you say the first Iron Man was where it all started Yeah. Um, but did they kind of like have this vision of well you, you know, know it, they are, it, they've not done it with Avengers with this one but well they, they did the mid credits thing with Thanos but yes. not at the very end but at the very end of Iron Man um, I think he gets home and uh, Nick Fury's there and says I want to talk to you about a team an idea so yeah, yeah, it yeah. was put there the seed was planted but they'd have to have gone for I think it's that yeah I'm sure it's that was that it the was. end of the second one yeah it was. it was the first yeah it was the first one yeah. oh, it was the first one I've only seen the first one alright <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I, I'm guessing that Don Cheadle is in either the second or the third yeah, he, well his character's in the first one Oh, you, right. you know his friend um, I can't remember his name was played by Terence someone but Don Cheadle I think he, he, the actor didn't really play on very well oh, with it, was a different, it was a different character yeah different, different, different actor so Don Cheadle just basically took it up on the second right, one right yeah, yeah and now he's War Machine yeah he's a he's an interesting little addition to the team I, I, I wasn't really sure who he was you see so yeah well if you go you back and watch know. the films he, he's in the second one yeah Tony's losing it he's dying and he needs to figure out a way of sort of saving himself really and um, he has this big fight with Don Cheadle in it and um, he ends up just stealing one of his suits and then he, Don Cheadle who works for the military they turn it into war machine got you yeah. and, and then everything eventually you know anything bad can be turned into good yeah, yeah. It's, it's, and that's that's kind of the one thing about this is that it's about the opposing forces of negativity and, and positivity mm. good and evil um, they they gave those two kids a pass yeah. because it, even though they, they you know pretty much just kicked everything off mm. and uh, they yeah. did but I suppose they thought they blamed Tony Stark for yeah. the death of the family but you know, you find out in the in the first Iron Man that there's like some Middle Eastern terrorist group stole a load of his weapons and were bombing. Yeah, and, you yeah. Know, so that... different countries. So it it was feasibly that. I don't. Know, it wasn't Tony Stark person, but they blamed him. Yeah. So they thought we're going to kill the Avengers. But when you find out that Ultron's idea is to essentially wipe out all life on the planet and let it start again. Yeah, you got to take a back yeah. seat and think. Wait a second, whose side am I going to be on now? Yeah, and if but you can't beat them, join them. Indeed. I'm actually glad because I, you know, when um, when Elizabeth Olsen was sitting there holding the uh, the explosive device, just b before uh, was it before it went off, or was it when she actually had her big, uh, uh, big explosion, mm. her, her what, what do you call it, her outburst? Let's call it her outburst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She turns it over, and I was kind of hoping that it wasn't going to say "Made by Stark Industries." I was oh, like yeah. thinking, oh god, I hope it's not going to just. That's going to right kick her off again, isn't it? <laughs> I was like thinking, no, no, no. Um, but she's such a great character. Yeah, she she she's almost damaged. This this kind of Middle yeah. Eastern European girl. I, I kind of recognise her in people that I've known in my past, mm. and I, I I get where she comes from. I get that. Um, I, I get a little bit more of of Scarlett Johansson. Uh, what was her character's name? Uh, Black Widow. Black Widow. I get a little yeah, bit more Natasha of Natasha Romanoff. Yeah. yeah, Natasha what? Romanoff. A, oh, Romanoff. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. Because yeah. I kept on hearing Romanoff, and I thought someone was mentioning Romanoff. I thought, <laughs> don't play that to the Hulk. Um, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> but her character is very dark. You know what I mean? Yeah. She she was essentially taken away, tortured, turned into a weapon. But essentially, this is Scarlett Johansson's strength. She plays. She's kind of like the new Cynthia Rothrock Rock of the of, of that's that's an old reference for you guys who have no idea who she is. She was a martial arts. Uh, the the only 
martial arts woman allowed to make film in the in the eighties, I believe. Yeah. And and to to me that there was a fear of of her just being typecast as this of this kick ass woman, kick ass lady. Yeah. But but luckily they've got a little bit of depth there for her. Yeah, absolutely. Although she can pull the chops out acting wise when she wants yeah. to, when she was telling the story about how they sterilized her and stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's pain there. Yeah, there's definitely something that she she could lean to that was relevant. But what about painful? What, what about what the about? the Hulk Hulkbuster fight? Well, everybody was. Uh, I've I've heard about the Hulkbuster, and uh, I I've, I've, I've seen images of course when when re researching for this i've yeah. seen all these people saying oh well, i've heard that there's going to be a fight between the hulk and the hulk buster i'm like i'm like yeah yeah okay right calm down <laughs> well come on it was amazing <laughs> it was it was staggering it was but um again such the technical achievement to have achieved that it's just the incredible. hulk is still flesh and blood right though what is he made of what is that well that's the thing with him the he's just pure Rubber. anger it's pure rage. So the more you hurt him, the angrier he gets, and he just doesn't stop. And that's it's it's incredible because he was just panning him through. I mean, I mean, I, <laughs> what was really funny though, he smack him in the smack face. Him in the go face. to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. You know. Yeah, it's kind of like the worst thing you should ever do with a baby. <laughs> it's yeah. like, this is like the the this is parenting one hundred and one, not a how to. This is a cautionary yeah. tale. Um, it was it, that's kind of what you thought. It's like that's what they're doing here. Right? Yeah, they were just trying to put, pummel him into put baby submission to sleep. and then and that's why they have the, let him calm the, the down. lullaby, you see. They, they, yeah. they are likening Hulk to being a, a child having tantrums. Mm. And that's what it is. The more you the more you irritate the child, the more he's going to get angry yeah, and irritated. Yeah. Um, so, so, the film, oh, wow. we loved it. We loved it. It's a good film. Um, go see it. Um, just, just, Take it up the charts. I don't think it's going to be a problem. I don't think it's going to be a problem. I think no. I would like it. It would be great if it took off James Cameron's mantle and became the highest selling film of all time. It wouldn't hurt. Think it's possible. Think there's it a possibility of it doing that. No. First Avengers. They got to be at number three. Yeah, they have got to be careful. But uh, there's bound to be something around the corner that's going to snap back. I mean, there's always Avatar two. You know. Oh Christ. There's, there's always... No one cares about it, Kevin. Anyway, let's talk about it. <laughs> there isn't, thank goodness. Yes. But, so, you know, yeah. the last thing I want to talk about, right, we love the film. I, I I watched it last night, and I've watched it this morning. Are you going to watch it again? better the second time? Probably. I'll probably go with Sam again. Um, <laughs> but do you think superhero films are going to get to the point and break? Everything does. There's only so far. Like they say in The Avengers... Nothing lasts forever. Nothing lasts forever, and yeah, you've got to think in terms of this is this is the golden age now. Mm. Maybe this is it. Like, I mean, every every eighties was like action, mostly action stars. 90s martial arts was, as like, well. You yeah, know, they had all that, but they, they weren't making great money. Um, it's, but it's not about money; it's about popularity. I think that mm. it's about it's about what you remember from this era. It's going to be yeah. the era of. I mean, the, the tens to the two tens are going to be all about um, the Marvel. When I watched it last um, night, it was all nerds like myself. Everyone had the like, Captain America coats on and all that kind of stuff. And we were I, very inconspicuous today. Very yeah, black well, and, today we could. Yeah, yeah the, today yeah, I thought I didn't think there'd be many people there, but it was quite busy considering it was ten thirty on a Friday morning. Yeah, there's about so the weekend's going to be huge. For yeah, the rest. it's yeah. going to be huge, man. It's going to be big, and I, I think when the America when America releases, it's going to be even bigger. Yeah, um, and wow, of course. Joss Whedon, man, thank you very much. You made an incredible film. Um, long may this superhero thing continue. Okay, so it. so remember to um, clock into roastedportions.com and uh, you can get all the episodes there. You can also be redirected straight to the SoundCloud, yep. which is frame by frame. Two. Two. It's frame by frame two. Yeah, someone got in before us. Yes. Uh, you can email us on frame by frame 78 at gmail.com. You can also find us on the Roasted Portions um, YouTube channel. And on Facebook, we have a, a page as well. Please like us. We're yeah, there. You, yeah. You'll, you'll recognise the logo. It's it's right there. Um, we need your support. We'd love your support. We want to start making more of these. We want to we want to be able to go to the cinema a lot more and get some new uh, films under our belt um, and keep coming to you with these yeah. fresh reviews. But yeah, thanks for listening. And um, yeah, check out Avengers Age of Ultron. It's yes. Quite amazing. 
Exactly. Thank you. And thank you. Yeah. That's Andy. He's my driver. You know, I'm, I'm going to take this opportunity to, to let the people know how they can contact our friends at Frame by Frame. They do that podcast You thing. know, two guys, yeah. They do the podcast, okay? So they're, how... They're, they're nice. They're, they're like a forest, which is a beautiful thing. Exactly. And so if you want to, to, to do the communicating thing, you know, the social networking uh, thing... Yeah, you can yeah. Uh, you can tweet those guys tweet? at Frame by Frame 78. If you'd like to go to their website, that will be www. Roastedportions.com. You don't need to do the WW. It's implied that it's going to be the World Wide Web. People need to know that. Okay, just go to roastedportions.com. Okay, you go down the right hand side. You've got the social connections. You can you can talk to the people who do the show. You can even talk to uh, uh, the people who made that movie. You know, CACO3. Who'd want to talk to those mooks? I don't know. They made a pretty interesting movie, right? It was in black and white. Yeah, black and white. I yeah, like you know, that. We like black and white because, and there was also some trees in that movie too. Oh, trees! It's like like being in a forest, which is a beautiful thing. Other connections, you can really get to know these people on YouTube as well. And if you want to comment on their on their podcast, I urge you to do that. Okay. Yeah, I think it is a, a proper, really nice thing if people want to start contacting these Subscribe guys. Subscribe to them and then and com- comment. I mean, it's just just polite, you know. Also, you can email them at framebyframe78 at gmail dot com. That's it. I think that's everything wrapped up. So, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna go and plant a tree somewhere. Okay, you go plant some trees. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna go, go and plant a tree. I'm gonna go tweet. You tweet. I'll plant a tree. It's us, we're out of here.